everybody to Warrior Women in Business podcast episode number 65. We're live on YouTube. We had some technical difficulties, uh, but we will be reposting this full episode today. Don't worry on all the Warrior Women in Business social media channels, including LinkedIn, Twitch, Facebook, and others. So getting started, uh, for those of you that are new to Warrior Women in Business, my name is Jasmine Sandler. I'm the CEO of JS Media and Warrior Women in Business, which is a division of JS Media, a branding and digital marketing agency. The mission of Warrior Women in Business is to bring female leaders across industry from business, law, entertainment, really any anyone that I personally handpick that I think is kicking butt in their area and can bring insight and advice to those of you that are interested in these careers. Today, I have a very, very special guest on uh, as part of a partnership that Warrior Women in Business is doing and very proud of with the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp specifically for the Women's Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp in Los Angeles, December 5th through the 8th. So I have Britt Lightning, the musical camp director and lead guitarist of Vixen, if you just want to say hello, Britt. Hello, everybody. Hi, Jasmine. Thank you for having me on this. You're welcome. Really happy to have you on. So before we get started and before I jump into Britt's bio, just a few things I'd like to note about Warrior Women in Business, some things that we have coming up and some things that just happened also with Warrior Women in Business. So First and foremost, if you've been following us, we did a private tour with Phyllis J. Wilson, who is the president of the Women's Military Foundation in the, at the Arlington Cemetery, where over 3 million uh, women in the military stories are told. We created a, a special t-shirt for women, warrior women in the military, and a percentage of every sale is going to support them. They're going through like this huge renovation there. It's a gorgeous place. And they're also trying to get more women that are in active duty to tell their stories. So you should check that out in our newsletter and all our social media. Furthermore, um, we we had a couple of really <laughs> amazing guests. I always feel very lucky um, to be in this position. But we had recently, I interviewed Kim Davis, who's a senior VP of Multicultural Audience Development and Social Impact at the National Hockey League. And she talked about what they're doing. And they're cha really changing the face of hockey. Anybody that knows me, I played hockey my whole life. So for me to see that girls are now being, girls in a multicultural audience are really being um, attracted into the NHL and supported through the PWHL is really exciting. I also had the former um, CMO of um, Chrysler, Julie Roman, an amazing guest. So I encourage you to check out the podcast. But what do we have coming up that I am like over the moon, so excited about <laughs> As a warrior women in business, as somebody that loves Los Angeles and most importantly, musician, is that we are partnering with the Women's Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. It's happening very quickly uh, in December. So I asked Britt to be on today to talk about the camp, talk about her background. I have a lot of women and girls who attend our warrior women events in New York and LA that like really want to understand what it's like and how do they become successful? How do they improve their, not only their musicianship, but also how they work with women in, in this industry and where did they get support. So uh, Britt Lightning is the musical camp director. She also hails from Boston, as I do, and is a Berkeley graduate, <laughs> which is pretty amazing. And she's I didn't mention, she's the lead, lead guitarist of Vixen. She's toured around the world. She's an amazing person and down to earth, which is super cool. And uh, so, Britt, I'd like to start talking today about, like, I always ask my guests, you know, how you got to where you are today, how you chose this path, um, and were there any people, specifically women along the way, that you think supported you in getting to where you are today? Yeah, um, well, I, I was always passionate about music, and uh, once I heard Eruption by Eddie Van Halen, I decided I wanted to be a rock star. That was it. That's all I could think about. Um, that's when I was about 14, and uh, started. I got a guitar and started uh, playing a bit when I was, was 15, and uh, and it ruined my life ever since. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, it was the best decision I love ever. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, it, it's just been, you know, a... a you got to do what you love, bottom line. So yeah. uh, I tried doing everything. I always say I've had like every job there is. I've been a flight attendant. I've been a bartender. I've been uh, done sales and marketing for companies. I've I've done it all. And um, 
And when I moved to LA uh, about eight years ago, I thought, okay, maybe it's time to just like grow up, get off the road, stop, stop acting like I'm 18 still and uh, use my degree that I have in music business. And I started working at Universal Records in the legal department. But nice. all those things, even though there was fun aspects of everything, my heart was always in rock and roll. And um, I just knew I wasn't going to be fully happy in, until I, I really did that. Um, and uh, so I, I have to say my my mom as a female was very inspiring and helpful to me, um, first and foremost, because um, she's a very strong, independent woman, uh, ran a company herself and um, was just always like, if that's what you want to do, do it. Um, and I'll never forget, I, I was kind of like, like I said, even though I enjoyed working at Universal and, and the, the work was interesting, contracts, and I learned a lot, um, you know, I was commuting. I was living in Hollywood at the time and the corporate offices were in Santa Monica and anybody that knows anything about LA traffic um, can understand. But I was in, you know, two hour rush hour traffic on my way to work and on my way home. And, uh, and, and it was, you know, a nine to six job. And I would call my mom and complain every morning, like, oh my God, I'm just exhausted. I sit at a desk all day. I don't, you know, I never, I never practiced guitar anymore. I didn't move to LA to not oh. go out jams and not go out and you yes, know I get that. things mm -hmm. and so I had to hand it to her she said on uh, one of my calls right before I was coming home for Christmas break she said you know what do me a favor and don't call me again and tell us to tell me that you've quit because you're obviously miserable and this isn't you and, and I'm sick <laughs> of hearing it and, and I don't want you to come home for Christmas break and that's all you talk about is you just complain and complain about like how you're not doing what you love so she was right. And so I got right back on the right track. And, um, and about right when I came back really from Christmas break after that, I ended up joining a, a Vixen and, you know, and that's who I'm playing with now. And it's been a great ride with them. Um, playing with all females is one of my absolute favorite things uh, yeah. in, in the world. I mean, I've played in a lot of bands. Um, I've been on the road. I, I, yeah, I really started touring when I was 17 I did my first tour when I was about 17 took some time off of high school and <laughs> did that and um and yeah sorry I think I went on a full full on no 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 I I love the mom <laughs> story that how she was so encouraging but other females that inspired me I mean when yeah. I started playing guitar uh, I was really into A to Drop because I, I started playing guitar because of Eddie Van Halen so from Van Halen I went to like Motley Crue and Poison and other hair bands and then there was Vixen. That was the only all female band that I knew That's of true. at that time. Um, you know, there was of course the Runaways and and Fanny even earlier on than that. That wasn't really the genre that I was listening to at the time. Um, and so, you know, Vixen was inspiring. I wanted to be in an all girl gang. I thought it was just so cool and so powerful to to be with other women. Um, but Lita Ford also absolutely and Hart, um, Anna and Nancy Wilson um, were all all big inspirations. Uh, Bonnie Raitt. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. It's funny because Eddie Eddie Van Halen has really inspired so many people, right? It's just oh. interesting. The, I, uh, the guitarists or just musicians, it's just a very interesting thing. And I think it's about innovation, right? Because I personally feel like he was an innovator. Right? Absolutely. He modded his guitars in ways that nobody had done before. He played with this style. I still think he's just the best player, hands down. Like he <laughs> blows my mind. I can re-listen to a record that I've heard thousands of times and still be blown away like it's the first time I'm hearing it that's really cool okay so let's talk about um let's talk about a little bit about what you have in your background <laughs> the rock and roll fantasy camp which I heard of just so everybody knows thank you for doing that so <laughs> that was a very <laughs> flight attendant thing to do I loved it <laughs> so, uh, so you know I I personally heard about you guys um I forget who it was that was at one of your camps and I, I'm a singer, so I was like, oh, my God, I want to go. And I hadn't even heard of the Women's Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Um, and so I reached out, and then I started learning more about the organization. It's so cool. Um, and then I found out that you had a women's camp. And I was like, wow, this is really interesting. And I know, like, I've interviewed the CMO of Guitar Center on this podcast. I've done so much. I've been a speaker at NAM, And I was like, oh, it's so cool that someone is actually supporting women in music who are serious musicians that want to take it to the next level and have their dreams come true. So um, how did you find out about the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp? How did you get involved? Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, I had been seeing the camps pop up on like friends 
musician friends, Facebook pages and stuff. And I never really understood what it was. And they'd be like random pictures of cool jams with all these people that don't normally play together. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> and uh, so one day I just did a deep dive down the rabbit hole and, and researched everything about rock and roll fantasy camp and, uh, and got in touch with David Fishoff, the CEO who founded it in 1996. So it's been going for 28 years strong. And um, mm -hmm. this was back in 2019. And he invited me to be a counselor and do my uh, first camp. And so I was a counselor. That camp was themed um, cheap trick playing Sergeant Peppers. Uh, oh, that's so cool. I know. <laughs> yeah, that was like, it, it was so cool. So that was my first time being a counselor. Um, and it was so much more than I had even imagined it would be people are like oh it's this cool thing and it's pretty you know magical but the magic is a whole other level um just the i i um i kind of compare it to like <laughs> trauma bonding in a way like you know when people go to war together they're war buddies like they've gone through all this stuff you mm -hmm. know and 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 so now they're just they're friends for life they'll never forget that moment in time that they yeah. shared and uh, it's kind of like that at rock camp, but uh, less severe, you know, um, less life threatening uh, for sure, but you know, <laughs> and enjoyable. But like people come together, I place them in bands. I interview every single camper before they come to camp. I get a vibe for their skill level, their personality, what they hope to get out of camp. And I place them in bands that I think would be the best fit. And mm -hmm. uh, they've never met before. I set them up on a call so they can speak and uh, email thread. They get to know each other at about two weeks prior to camp and they can start uh, figuring out their set list, talking about what songs they want to focus on, things like that. And uh, then they get to camp and they're placed in a room and they're together for four days, uh, rehearsing, doing jam rooms, master classes, Q&A sessions, jamming with the special guest rock stars. And then they perform two live sets at the end of the four days of camp. Um, when we do them in L.A., sometimes uh, we do them at the Whiskey or the Viper Room or the Troubadour, but a legendary. Nice. Um, <laughs> you, all uh, three. Yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Legendary three. venue in Hollywood. Yeah. And, um, and the performances are public, open to friends and family. Uh, so people That's can come so in and cheer cool. them on and see them on stage living out their musical dreams. And uh, the bonding, though, that takes place is a uh, networking is really unlike anything I've ever seen. And um, these bands that I'll, I'll put together will stay together. Um, we have bands that even... And we get people from all over the world. Let me say that too. All over the world and all ages and all skill levels. So oh. we'll have people coming in from, you know, uh, we had a band, one was from Sweden, one was from Australia at the last camp and we saw, and the rest from the U.S. And these people stay together. They continue to talk on Zoom. Um, sometimes they do like quarterly gigs or at least an annual gig. They fly in and keep the band yeah. together. So it's, it's very cool. So um, I started uh, working as a musical director uh, that following year in 2020 after I did my first camp in 2019 and uh, then of course COVID hit so um, you know we then transitioned and did online master classes we um, mm -hmm. I, I helped uh, interview over 170 rock stars during COVID from Roger Daltrey in England of The Who to Alice Cooper to uh, Joe Elliott of Def Leppard to uh to, to managers, to agents, to all, all guitar players, drummers, everything in the music industry. And it was so inspiring and awesome. And we got people, people on the calls um, to ask their own questions and to just interact at a time when we were so closed off to everybody. Yeah. And so that really um, helped us get through COVID. And, and then in 2022, um, we started bringing back the camps and 2022 is the first ever women's rock and roll fantasy camp. And I felt as though that this was needed. And that was because, um, we have about 80 people, you know, that come to a camp that, that, you know, we break them into bands. So there's maybe like 10 to 14 bands in a camp that amounts to about 80 people. And out of those 80 people, we have five or less women at every camp, um, that's what there was a trend that I was seeing when we started back up in 2022. And I said, you know, David, I think we need a women's camp. I think um, more women, women will come if, if, if it's more of like an inclusive, like just, just women, just a very supportive platform where you can feel safe and talk about anything. And, and some people think, oh, like, what would women talk about that they can't talk about in front of men? But it's a different thing. As anybody knows, Come as on. a woman yeah, in any industry, um, and rock and roll is still pretty male dominated, but. Um, both, oh, it's an industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we've come a very long way. But, you know. Um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's different. And to have that support, like, you know, to have Nancy Wilson on stage doing a Q and a and the things that she goes into um, and the questions that are asked are different. If, if there would be, have been men, you know, in the audience, I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, we had Winona Judd and Lizzie Hale at the the second annual one that we did in, um, in Nashville. And just, there were tears in the audience just because there was oh. just raw honesty and emotion yeah. and, um, it, it was just unbelievable. And the level of support that I saw that came out of the women's camp was different. You know, sometimes at the rock camps, everybody's supportive, but like your band will go on, you do this out at the whiskey, and then they're like off to the rainbow for pizza or something because they're so excited hanging with their friends. But yeah. at the women's camp, everybody stayed for everybody set. Not one person left. Everybody that was is, you know, that's, rooting that's for the other. goal that's with, with shows. I yeah. Know. That's that's the best thing to hear. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. I'm getting chills thinking about it, but it was definitely <laughs> special. And sure enough, that was one of our fastest selling out camps, the first women's uh, mm -hmm. rock camp. When we had uh, we had Kathy Valentine on that one. We had right. um, Melissa Etheridge. We had Nancy Wilson, and we had Arianthe um, as special guests at that camp. And mm -hmm. then the next one, we had um, yeah, Winona Judd. We had uh, Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm. We had Vicky Peterson of the Bangles. Um, and also I have to mention, we have incredible counselors like at this upcoming camp. Um, well, we have three fourths of Vixen. So we've got Roxy Petrucci. She's doing her very first rock and roll fantasy camp on the drums and Julia Lage, uh, our bass player, who's amazing. Uh, we have Eva Gardner who plays bass for pink. She's yes, for she is amazing. <laughs> Jenny V of the Eagles of death metal. She's incredible. Um, so we, we just have an amazing lineup, um, of counselors that will be with you the whole time too, to mentor you. And, um, and yeah, I'm just so excited that we could bring women together in this way and support women in music. And it's a big movement right now, like the Rock Hall, for example, I was just there. They have a revolutionary women in music exhibit that is so cool, um, featuring so many iconic musicians. And I'm just glad that people are, you know, getting recognized and people like Alice Cooper bringing, uh, you know, Orianthe and, and Nita Strauss up in, into the uh, spotlight there. And uh, it's just awesome. It is, it is really awesome. And and so can you talk a little bit about like the master classes for people that don't understand what, first of all, I'm speaking there, so I'm super excited. And so we have a there, panel. So I want to say we, so, we haven't had a panel at any other camp other than the yeah, women's so, camp. And so we have a yeah, panel. Let's go ahead. Speakers. I was just going to say Billboard is also partnering with us and Melinda Newman over at Billboard is going to be moderating this panel and it's going to be yep. great. We have Melinda over at Women Who Rock speaking on the panel. Um, I'm uh, we actually have one of the curators at the Rock Hall, uh, this great uh, woman, Haley, who's also a musician that's going to be speaking on it. Um, well, I have a full list. We haven't even, it, it's yeah. big. So. <laughs> um, yeah, and so it's like learning course. and connecting on so many levels. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we want to talk about, you know, the business side of things, too, and, you know, women in the industry, uh, like yourself. Well, you're, you're a musician and in the industry, which is very cool. Same with me, you know. Um, but I, I think it's, I do also think it's important to have both of those aspects too, when you're, you know, at least just a sense of, of business, I think, and, you know, just to help represent yourself and, you know, not be taken advantage of and just knowing some of the ins and outs of the industry, which is why I think it's important to not only teach the music, um, and do the master classes, which the master classes focus on music. So we'll have like a bass master class, drums master class, a songwriting master class. Um, and these are all put on by the counselors. So each counselor will do their own master class. I would do a guitar master class or yeah. you know, um, you know, touring, um, performing, uh, even uh, rock and roll fashion, you know, uh, all sorts Very of Very important, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I really do have to say that. It is important. If you don't feel like I, well, how are you going to convince the, the audience costume. that yeah, <laughs> I actually saw um that video of of uh, Nita Strauss yesterday, and I was like, oh my god, I love her outfit. Yeah, I, I just like it. it. She, I love how she. I mean, I love how you dress, but I saw that I was like, oh, I love how she dresses. It just like brought her up here, and I think we need to sh when we shine, right? It's so the fashion. I think is so so important. <laughs> so I'm yeah. glad you brought it up. Yeah, well, it gives you a different kind of confidence and th and that's why i changed my name to brit lightning um that's actually not my real last name more fast as lightning you know this. <laughs> yeah but you know i needed i had stage fright so i needed something to like ah. step into another character but i i feel as though fashion can do that for people too like when i'm dressed in my superhero costume you know i'm i can go out there <laughs> i'm not you know it could take on a different persona 
Yeah. I think a lot of rock stars feel that way. I mean, look at like David Bowie and his outfits, Prince, and uh, even Elvis, the way he, you know, you, you get into that persona. Yeah. 100%. So that's exciting. So we'll, we'll be, will we see different costumes and outfits or, I mean, this is kind of exciting for the people, the campers that are coming, right? Well, like- yeah. People get dressed <laughs> up for their live performances. I mean, they, yeah. I'll never forget one of my last bands at one of the rock camps. I had this guy, he came in dressed like a golfer and uh, he left uh, the last day at the whiskey. He had eyeliner on, he had uh, (laughs) like cool rock shirt on. He had a bandana and his wife was like, dumbfounded. (laughs) Like she came to the final performance. Her jaw was on the floor. Like what? What just happened to my husband? He's a completely <laughs> different person now. <laughs> he was you. Should, he was on that on the inside, right? He was, yeah, yeah. We got yeah, it. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yes, so this is. I mean, if, a rock star. If you and I got to say, confidence right. is a big thing that we talk about. We talk about a lot of things on Warrior Women in Business. One is confidence. I think we talked about that a lot in our last post- podcast episode, but also leadership. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, how do confidence and leadership play a part in what you do and what you've seen with all these amazing names that you just dropped that are going to be part of this camp? Um, what's like some commonalities you see in terms of how have you and those women become successful in your industry? How have you used confidence and leadership? How do you support each other? Just anything that you can talk around those three things would be nice. Yeah. yeah I mean, confidence is huge. And, I, um, you know, I think it's important. Uh, to not compare yourself to others and just recognize your own strengths and recognize that you are your own unique person. And, um, and what you do is, is yeah, purely uniquely yourself. I think, I think, you know, it gets really hard um, and you get really in your um, head. Sorry. There's like a lawnmower going on over there. Is that too loud? Can you hear that? I don't hear the lawnmower and you don't hear the drills. So we're all good. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. We all have crazy things going on right now. (laughs) It's like a weed whack or something. That's never, I don't don't hear Um, it. Anyways. uh, (laughs) Yeah. But when you're, when you just focus on you, cause there's a lot of outside noise, especially with social media and everybody competing and, you know, I mean, look, suicide rates went up when during COVID and everybody was just stuck on social media because you're constantly comparing your life to others. How come, you know, this person's doing that, you know, but you can't, you just can't do that. You have to just It'll drive you crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I try to not look at all that stuff too much and just have my own little bubble. And this is what I'm focusing on. This is what I want to do. And this is what makes me happy. And, uh, it, people don't like it. That's a great thing because that means you're, you're catching their attention and, you know, and, and you, maybe you're a threat or maybe, you know, if people talk badly about you, you know, they have um, the time to put into that. That's effort. You know, a lot of people, have some, like, uh, you know, comments and, and things like that. And, and the, I just thing. don't, it's like, I if actually, you- I have a story. So I don't know if you know the butcher babies. Yeah. Well, I mean, sorry about that. I'm sure you do. So yeah. I love I love them. I, I love them. And anyway, so um, one of them is doing solo work. So I chimed in on this. I actually never spend time chiming in on much on Facebook, but I chimed in. I was like, oh, good for her. Maybe she's got another project and this is a good thing in her evolution. Some guy went off on me and I said, all I said was, don't you have time to spend doing something better then gossiping. Negativity. Yeah. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, I was like, this person should be celebrated for what they're doing. Yeah. You know, so to me, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> so I, oh, I want to quote continue. something, but I can't remember the quote uh, that I just read. And it was something like something about how having haters is a good thing. You know, it's a, it means you're on the right track. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a warrior woman right there. I mean, you don't get these names. I mean, this is kind of like a lot of the women's organizations come from that old adage about, you know, being boss, the bossy woman, where does she kind of fit? And she has a lot of haters, but I think if you do it in a, I loved how you talked about staying in your own bubble and maintaining your emotions and your happiness. Yeah, because the outside world is very noisy and, you know, to, to be successful and be creative, you need to focus and, and, and do what your heart tells you, not what other people are telling you or what, you know, other people, you shouldn't do anything to please other people. If you're in the creative realm, that should just be for you. You have to make your own music and, and that's, that's what will be unique. And um, we have a lot of people that are 
um, not super confident when they come to rock camp because they're not professional musicians. So, you know, they've only played in their bedroom. They got a guitar during COVID. Maybe they've never, you know, you know, they've never yeah. stepped on a stage. They've never played with others. They've never been in a yeah, band. That's crazy. Oh, we have all wow. sorts of levels. We have people like that. Mm -hmm. And then we have people that play in tribute bands that are, are, are very accomplished. So an experience, but, um, but everybody leaves with a higher level of confidence because first of all, if, if Nancy Wilson tells you, you rock, you can do it. That was amazing. That's, you're never going to forget that. That's coming from like one of your idols and to have that validation is, is important um, as well as the support of others and, and, and the encouragement. Um, so to be in an environment that's just encouraging and, and says, yes, you can do it. And then you see your progress and then you're up there rocking a uh, set at the whiskey. Um, you can't, you can't deny it, it you know, it just the, the growth that you can have in four days. It's pretty amazing because it's very immersive. It's four full days. It's, we have 12 hour days at rock camp. Um, and, and they go even longer if you want them to, um, we keep the party going all night long. That's so, a beautiful um, thing. Yeah. And, uh, so, so I, I love, that's probably my favorite part of rock camp is seeing somebody that, um, is a little bit insecure with their abilities. Um, and just to see the growth after four days, but the, increase in confidence and it doesn't have to be necessarily musical confidence it can be personal confidence there's so many layers that that come out um at rock camp yeah i mean i could just imagine and i like that it's so focused and i i know as a creative person believe me that focus can kind of shoot you to the moon so having that dedicated time with top level people it seems it's so hard to find so I yeah, and you just you're you're surrounding yourself with successful people, people that have done it, you know. So um, you know, it's a little bit different than being in like you know a weekly music lesson. Like that's what people say. You know, I've been taking guitar lessons once a week for five yeah. years and learned more in these Very four different. days. Very yeah. different. Okay, so let's talk about allies a little bit. So you know, the traditional rock and roll <laughs> industry, right? We kind of can envision what that looks like. Very male dominated. You know what I mean? So um, have you found or, you know, have you found either groups or people, whether it's male or female, it doesn't matter, allies that you think have kind of helped you along the way? Because I'm assuming, I know in New York, believe me, you know, I find it like a needle in a haystack to find a great female guitarist. It is very hard. Yeah. So here, and maybe there are, but you just don't see them. So I'm wondering, you know, how you've tackled those things. Have there been... I'm assuming there's been challenges. How have you aligned yourself with people, groups, jams, organization oh. for the aspiring yeah. musicians that are listening? Yeah. Well, I think it's just important to, um, you know, be a good person and, and, and support each other. Like I said, support is, is very big because, because there's not a lot of women in the music industry. So, um, you know, to stay connected, to, to help each other out. To, if somebody's looking for a guitar player, I always like to recommend females or, you know, or drummers and things like that. Um, and, you know, a lot of the organizations that I think we're bringing together at, at Rock Camp, I mean, I know there's a Women's International um, Network that does the She Rocks Awards and stuff. There's some groups at NAMM. Um, but, you know, what you do is amazing. What um, Melinda Calazzi does for Women Who Rock, uh, bringing people together in that sense is great. Um, uh, you know, Live Nation now has a, a female sector. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know those people music. here. Gramercy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, Billboard is doing a lot like Melinda will talk about it on the panel. Um, yeah. So I just think, uh, you know, Gibson, Gibson is, is, yeah. is supporting women. Um, so just just all those big brands recognizing women, I think, is just huge. Um, and and hopefully it just gets bigger and bigger. And that's our mission here with the Women's Rock Camp, just to to have a great supportive place for women to rock and be rock stars and to find their inner rock star if they haven't realized it yet already that's great um so let's talk about like some of the for you personally if you have any kind of bits of advice to share to uh, whether they're a guitarist or like me a singer or drummer bassist whatever in terms of advice on how to keep going and where you saw in your own music career how did you realize you were progressing or I love the story because I don't know if you realized it but I'm a good listener and you kind of made it sound like I came to LA I did this I've been touring since I was 17 and then I joined Vixen I was like whoa you know and I personally know 
musicians here in New York that have been doing things for 20, 30 years, and they're still trying to hit that. And I keep telling them, you are amazing. You are amazing because I play with them. Mm -hmm. But I think that they don't either they don't see it or they don't feel it. And I never really know why. So I just if you wouldn't mind sharing like a little bit of advice on or like an example of how you knew you were getting to the next level with your own musical career. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I've definitely hit lots of roadblocks, um, but I've just haven't been able to stop. I think so when you're passionate about it, mm -hmm. you know, you can't stop. So I'll make my story real brief, but, mm -hmm. you know, I started playing guitar in high school and then, um, you know, my first roadblock was uh, there were no music classes. I went to a, a private Catholic school. And um, and so I was like, oh, there's no chorus. There's no band at this school. And uh, and so there was a guitar club after school and it was like all boys and they kind of didn't want me in there. Um, yeah. So that was like the first thing that fueled me. OK, I have to be really good and I'm going to show these people like being told no was helpful to me. Um, mm. You know, uh, so a lot of people are like, yeah. Do you, do you think it's a bad thing that it's, it, uh, the music industry is, is still male dominated? No, I think it's, it, we can use it to our advantage. Um, mm, you know, it, so if it's a challenge, if people think you're not going to be good, if people think I don't know how to set up my amp or my pedals, like good, <laughs> I'll let them think that all day long. And then I'll, impress ah, them, right. you know, and I'll try twice as hard because I have to overcome that, um, stereotype of, of not being good or being good for a girl. I don't, I don't like that. Um, yeah. So, so that helped me work hard. And so then I practiced and then I became guitar club president, you know, um, two ah. years in my high school. So I started that I've gone back to my high school and spoken, uh, to the whole high school as a special guest, um, about that and about starting, uh, the, uh, first, you know, music after school jam coffee house jam, we called it in our ah. cafeteria and boy, now they have a whole theater and stuff that they do big music concerts. Really? Oh, that's incredible. None of that before. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, and then, and then I had my own band jaded. It was an all female, uh, band in Boston that I had for years. And, you know, when you're booking yourself and, and writing songs and managing the band, trying to keep everybody happy and yeah. you're band doing grassroots very DIY you know we didn't make a lot of money so it was really hard so I always had side jobs I always had another hustle um and finally that kind of came to an end and my friend said you know you should audition for uh so, you know bigger stars and you can be a guitar player for hire um mm -hmm. and I had never thought of that before because I always just like the band mentality thing where everybody lives together in a house and it's all for one and one for all and, and yeah. you know we're in this and that's the only way we're going to make it. <laughs> so then that helped me branch out. And, um, uh, that one audition I did happen to be for Lady Gaga and I didn't get it, but I kept getting the call back. And then, uh, even though I didn't get that one gig, I, wow, it's interesting. at first I was discouraged. And then I realized that like, n no matter where you play, it's always good to put out the effort like you're playing Madison Square Garden because then other people see you you don't know who's in the room that this goes for being at any audition or any club even if it's like if, if you're playing a small club and it's dark and there's three people that one one of those three people could be somebody important that could change the whole course of your life I couldn't I, I gotta stop you but I gotta tell you that I say this to people obviously about music because there's like five people that come to our shows but I'm just joking but but also <laughs> about business you never know who's going to be in an office, in the audience. you got to be ready. And that's something people can, I think that COVID a lot of times has gotten people a little bit lazy about that. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because it's something that it's, it's something that I see quite a bit that people, they're just not ready or they don't they always put on your best performance business. So I'm sorry. I just had to say that because yeah. I've been doing that quite a bit lately. So Yeah. Yeah. It's important. And so anyway, so even though I didn't get that one audition, other people were impressed and I got every other gig basically from that one audition from various people that saw my audition. Uh, so then I went on and I, I was, you know, touring with a, a, a big Spanish artist, uh, Alejandro Sanz. That was a big world tour. Did that for about three years playing in stadiums all over. So that was a dream come true. And then got some other pop gigs and other things. So I've always just been active, but I've always, um, you know, I've always worked on other skills as well. And that proved helpful, especially during COVID when you couldn't do gigs and things like that. So I think it's always important to to know other skills as well. Just be well-rounded. Like I try to know a little bit about as much as possible. Like, you know, I can fix a car or I can, um, 
you know, uh, you know, just all, all sorts of different things. I just think it's important to, to not be so, um, have laser focus that you only have one skill. I think it's, you know, uh, whether it's business or learning multiple instruments or just, just being able to, to, to do more things. Like uh, if you can route a tour and be in a band, that's, you know, that's a skill that some people will be like, Oh, I'm going to take this guitar player over that one because she can, Tour manager. Or that's so, that's actually really, I, that's really, really true. And that's something I wanted to talk about, about the camp, because, you know, what's interesting to me is that um, whether you're a singer or you're a guitarist, I think going to the camp, I know in New York, believe me, <laughs> is that, you know, the more instruments that you know, and the more bit, and this is what I do as a speaker in music, right? It's like talking about what you, knowing more will help you get more opportunities. So I think what's interesting about the camp is that you could go as one discipline, but you're seeing more. And I think, I don't know if they're, um, if you've seen some of the campers come for one instrument, oh, like yeah. natural class. And then like right now there's this big trend, at least in New York, female drummers. It's like this big, tr there's so many female drummers like popping up every oh. second. It's really interesting and exciting. And um, I wonder if you've seen at the camp where people come for one instrument and then they find the drums or the bass. Yeah, absolutely. And we've had people come to camp as a uh, singer and then come back as a drummer or come back. So they come back as uh, specializing in different different instruments, which I think is really cool. Um, yeah, because you realize that, you know, you, you find the passion and learn so many things from different musicians. So, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's. And, and at the end of the day, one other important thing about being in a band is um, being a good person, because if you're on a tour or something, you're Amen. living with people and nobody wants to deal with a jerk and life's too short. <laughs> and at this point, even I love music, but I, I don't want to be in a band with people I don't enjoy being with. It's just not worth it. I'd rather do something else because, you know, you got to be having fun. You're playing music. We're also, anybody that plays music is lucky to have the talent and lucky to have the opportunity, whether you're playing in the local club or if you're on a huge tour, it doesn't matter. We're all lucky to be able to pursue our passions. Um, so, so be a good person and surround yourself with good people. I think that's very important. Surround yourself with positive energy, encouraging people, not people that bring you down or tell you that you can't do it because uh, yeah. anybody can do anything. And my dad always said, uh, give me 20 people that don't know the meaning of it can't be done and I can do anything. Um, and yeah, and that's, you know, that's how I feel like anything is possible. I, I do believe that. And my last word of advice to people is just, if you're talented and you have it and you're doing it, you will be found. And there's more awareness than ever where you can be seen through all the different platforms and social media. So if, if you have a talent, you post videos and you're just out there in front of people, say yes to every opportunity to play, get in front of as many people as possible and, and show off your talent as much as you can. And, and success will find you if, if you're, you're, you work hard. Yeah, I love that. I, it is about, I see that. I mean, that's always been my mantra <laughs> in terms of finding opportunities. People say, well, why are you doing all these things? It's like, I wouldn't do them or, you know, if I couldn't. And I think it's if you're driven and really want to do it. And I love the, the, I love how the camp embraces the beginner to the pro level. Mm -hmm. I think that's really critically important for people to understand. Like even at the pro level, you can learn. Oh, and I feel like yes. at the pro level, it's not, I mean, in my own opinion, maybe it's not even just about music. Maybe it's about how to be confident, how to make connections, how to network, things that, they, I mean, I speak at NAM and I see this. They don't, some of those pro level musicians, I'm like, why are they living in a basement or, you know, I just don't get it. So, so no. I think at both levels, it's, it's really exciting, you know. Yeah, everybody always has something to learn. I, you can't master music; it's endless. <laughs> you know, like there's no I like do, oh, no. because there's still more things you could do. It's just there's no end; it's infinite, which is awesome. Yeah, it absolutely is infinite. Um, so let's talk about when I asked you to be on. Well, actually, we connected through David, but you know, Warrior Women in Business. When you heard the term, what came to mind when you said? when you heard the term warrior women? Oh, I loved it. Um, well, first of all, I'm uh, very into military history and stuff like that. And I that's oh. pretty much all I do is watch 
old war documentaries and things like that. And so being a warrior is like, uh, that's one of my favorite words because we all have to be warriors in whatever we do and just be strong and, and get through it. Life is a, it's not a battlefield, but like, it's not easy. And so we all have oh, to be God. Yeah, warriors, um, in all aspects of life, you know, practice, you know, strength and, and determination and, and, you know, following doing the right thing. And so I, I love that. I love the imagery associated that you put together uh, with warrior women in music and the name and the, the visuals and it all ties in. And I think it's just important to be a warrior. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, how people can attend the camp. Now for me, uh, you know, I'm speaking, hopefully becoming a better singer and um, one well, that's my focus. In life. So um we're doing with Warrior Women in Business, we're doing graciously, they've given us a discount. Anybody that's interested in the show notes and in social media, we'll put all the links after the show. Um, but you're providing over $300 off of any package. There's so many packages and so many different ways that people can get involved. Um, so you can use the code warrior, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about, people have been reaching out to me since I started talking a little bit about the camp. So talk about how, you talked about how all levels of female musicians can come. Um, what about men? What about groupies? What about anyone else that's Yeah, so there is a man cave package. Um, okay, good. <laughs> where, um, so it, it, it's separate. You're not going to be with all the special guest headliners and stuff. You're not going to be hanging out with Nancy Wilson like we are. Um, <laughs> but uh, you will be mentored by a rock star counselor and a separate facility, a separate rehearsal facility. And, uh, and you'll go through a rock camp experience in that sense. Um, but it is a separate type of, like I said, we, we separate it. So you're, you're somewhere else. And, uh, but you'll get the training from one of our rock star counselors, somebody like Derek St. Holmes or Vinnie Apice or Bruce Kulik, you know, one of our great counselors. And you'll go through the whole rock camp experience and you guys will open for the women um, on our final night performance. I love, I love it. Yes, we are opening act. I love that. Kings before the queens. Yes. Um, but there, uh, there is groupies for <laughs> packages for women. Uh, so if you have a friend or a bandmate or not a bandmate, but a friend that it doesn't play an instrument, doesn't want to be in a band, uh, but wants to attend the camp, they can come to all the master classes, come uh, observe or hang out in the jam rooms, uh, come to the meals, the Q and a sessions with the, the headliners, get, take pictures with our, the stars and all that too. So that's a great way to get involved. Um, if you're not a musician, but you want to be a part of it and check it out. That's wonderful. Yeah. A lot of people have been reaching out to me and, and the asking, panels. Yeah. And they, you men just, and, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in our threads and I'm like, Oh, you know, they, they just need to read beyond the photo. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's so much that you guys are offering. It's so amazing. And and I think like the camp for the women is, you know, I love that you talked about like the confidence level and the collaboration that everybody watches every other band. I'm always saying that these are ways to really support each other. Um, yeah. So I think people need to plan. And I love that you also talked about people come from around the world. So it's not just for the LA people, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but people yeah. here from New York. Yes, yes, yes. It's a great way to connect with people from all over the world, which is really cool. Almost every camp we get at least two people that are, yeah, from, from another country and it's it's great. Okay. So if people have questions about the camp, um, just uh, how do they reach out through the website? Okay. So you can email me, Britt, B-R-I-T-T -T, at rockcamp.com. You can call uh, the number on the website, 888-762-BAND um, and talk to a live person and we can answer questions. And then I host an informational Zoom session every Tuesday um, on Zoom, just like this, um, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I'm there to answer any questions you have about the camp. Um, and also we have past campers, new campers, sometimes special guest rock stars that pop on it to talk about their experiences too. Wonderful. Okay. We'll put, I know that you're a very busy woman. So, um, we're going to put that all in the show notes. I really do encourage all of my, anybody in my audience, I know so many musicians, this is really cool on so many levels. Um, also I love that you have these packages for, you know, the husbands, the boyfriends that might want to come and those that maybe aren't musicians, but they just want to be around this really cool experience and come to these shows. So all of this will be in the show notes. I, Britt, I want to thank you tremendously 
for partnering with Warrior Women in Business, for being so generous with your time and your knowledge. Um, it's going to be a wonderful thing in December. So I hope y'all reach out to Britt with any questions that you do have, knowing how busy she is. She does her best to get back to you. And uh, we're looking for an amazing time with the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. As far as Warrior Women in Business goes, look out for upcoming podcast guests. Look out for upcoming events in New York, LA. We're also kind of talking to some folks in Nashville. So that might be happening in 2025 and maybe Boston. <laughs> it always gets forgotten. Right. So um, so anyways, uh, thank you for being on. Thank you for all of you that watched us on YouTube. This show will be edited. All the podcast notes will be in the description for any links, any contact information. Uh, that'll be up in the next 24 hours and you'll also get an email. So from episode 65, Warrior Women in Business, Jasmine Sandler and my featured guest, Britt Lightning, I am signing off. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I'm a woman.